what do you think is the worst poem in your new book? <laughs> That's a good question. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to have a conversation with Matthew Buckley Smith of Slee Ricketts fame and also the author, the poet of the new book called Midlife. We're going to be talking all about book blurbs. It's the same typical shit we do with Bucks. He says, when you're publishing too many poems, I say you should publish all your poems. We giggle about it, we laugh, but then at the end of the day, he still thinks that, you know, you need to be really sparing with the poems you publish, and I'm like, just put them all out and burn the house down and the whole thing. Now, this conversation I had with him lasted a very long time, and we had a great time, and we were cracking up. Basically, this episode is going to be about his book, okay, which you guys should all go get right now. Okay. There'll probably be another episode where we just talk about writing and literature and stuff like that. Okay. Because there there was plenty of that stuff. I do think though, for my members on my YouTube channel, I may post the <laughs> the giant chunk of the conversation which was Bucks telling me, he Bucks was giving me therapy on how to get more out of going to therapy. And I was explaining to him how not to act when you are in therapy. I think at the end, we all learned something about each other and about ourselves. So, um... That will be appearing eventually in the members feed. I think what I'm going to be doing more for the podcast in that world um, over on the member side is a lot of like either outtakes or um, just things I don't want the general public knowing about. I seem to step in it a lot. So the mouth moves before the brain thinks and horrible things happen. But anyway, this was an amazing chat. Bucks is also going to read one of his poems in here. The, the one I queued up at the beginning of the show. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a good talk. I, I, I don't want to, like, talk too much more. Oh, but I will say, March 23rd, I will be at the Bombay Beach Lit Fest um, on the zine... On the zine panel, I will be doing a little bit of reading, and then I will have a table there hawking my stuff. So if you want to come out and see me or punch me in the fucking face and then run as fast as you fucking can, um, come on out to the Salton Sea. If you're out in the desert area, Palm Springs area, on March 23rd for, again, the Bombay Beach Lit Fest. Come on out to that thing. All right. So, without any further ado, on with the schlow. Somebody talk to you, like giving you criticism about a blurb someone left on your book. No, so a blurb like on the back of the book. Yeah, somebody yeah, gave so, you shit about it. No, he didn't give me shit. He's he was very, mm. being very nice, but he said like, "Oh, I kind of disagree with what this guy said." Oh, because I noticed that, the, and I was like, "I actually don't know what he said." <laughs> I don't. I can't, I, I can't because, and it's not because I, I'm like a, like a, a yogi or something. Like it's because I can't, if I read the blurbs on my book, I would lose my fucking mind. Like oh, I you can't totally read, read one no, 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 for no. us. No. Well, I've read, I've read one <laughs> okay. and it's, ex I've read exactly one and it's the one that's on the website. And the reason I've read it is that it was originally in an email to me. Oh. And then I said, can I put this in the third person and make it a blurb? <clears throat> I see. I see. Um, but no, I can't. I, I don't read. I've never read a review of any of my work, any of my plays, no. any of my book. I've never read a blurb. I haven't read the preface to my first book. He could say anything. I don't know. He could have said anything in that preface. I don't know. He could say, yeah. Matthew is a proud Nazi. And like, I mean, I don't know. I have no well, idea. Well, then let me like, um, I don't know, eight or 10 years from now, write a blurb for your next book. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you promise you're not going to read it, <laughs> let me do that. I promise I won't read it. I can't promise Joanna won't read it. <laughs> your epitaph on your tombstone is either going to say, I he was just trying to be polite, or it'll say, Matt Wall, human black ice. <laughs> Shit, I should have asked you for a quote for my book, dude. Fuck. Yeah. Anytime, anytime. Uh, I'm always... I also believe in short blurbs. So those uh, those both work. If I have to do blur, I think I've only been asked to do a blurb once. And I would not be sad if I never got asked again. But yeah. if I do, I want to I want to bring back just I don't know if I'm bringing it back. I want to innovate very I want short blurbs need to be the norm. If we're going to have blurbs, let's just have like like up to like 10 words max. <clears throat> yeah. You know? This dude asked me for a blurb for his new book and I didn't That actually that would be a great blurb. This dude asked me for a blurb for, a blurb for his new book. <laughs> Matt Wall author of and so i didn't know what to say so i basically wrote like i don't know like six or seven paragraphs and i'm oh like God. and i'm like i'm sure there's First. a line or two in here just you pick just put one the whole thing like, no i don't know oh, i don't yeah. know what he did the but whole just, back of his book is going to be your blur no he's going to use like eight words with ellipses in between every word this book is fine <laughs> yes oh shit that that seems likely what is the what was the what was my favorite blurb i ever saw do you like it because of how ridiculously inappropriate it is for a blurb uh yes but it also i thought was very effective like it was both totally inappropriate and like really satisfying and and like actually did create interest like it made me want to read the book so the book is uh notable american women which is the first novel by ben marcus and the blurb on the back of the edition it was like an early edition i got i don't know if you would still find it if you got bought bought a copy today but the blurb on the back was how can one word from ben marcus's rotten filthy heart be trusted and then it's attributed to michael marcus ben's father <laughs> that's fucking awesome yeah that's like that's the blurb that's the dream blurb and did the book live up to the hype oh it's great great totally fucked up book Totally okay. fucked up. It is about his family, but it also clearly is like wildly made up, but just like a crazy, fascinating story and just like the, an amazing exercise in voice. And uh, it it is a very experimental novel, but unlike most experimental fiction, it's just like riveting page to page. Like he just is such a fucking weirdo, but every page is just fascinating. Okay. What do you think is the worst poem in your new book? <laughs> that's a good question because of course i tried to cut all of that <laughs> and i cut a lot of poems like this is a very small percentage of the poems i wrote over this span of time the original manuscript had um like how many pages was it and then you started weeding stuff out that's not exactly how it worked because i I mean, most things just never made it into it. I can go to all the, the, I have a file of all the poems I wrote over the period out of which this book came. Yeah. And there are a lot of poems in there. But did you do a thing where like, these are all the poems and then these are the ones you picked. And then these are the ones that made it to the next cut. And then these ones made it into the final. Yeah. I mean, but there also, I was adding and subtracting throughout each oh, of those because it was okay. over the course of like, I probably just put together the first early version of a manuscript four or five years before I published this or before I like fin had a finished version of this. Wow. Cause there was also some delay yeah. before it actually came out. I did a fair, like a pretty thorough process on that and then showed it to Ryan. And he said it, he thought it was very good, but it was too relentless. So I actually added in a lot of new poems after that, but but that was also a process of like writing a lot of poems, choosing only a few of them, and then cutting and adding along the way. So when he said it was too relentless, you did not ask a follow up question. No, I think I it it, it rang true, like it, that wasn't the only thing he said. Like we had a yeah. conversation. Oh, okay. But that okay. was kind of like that was like a major observation about it, and it felt like, yeah, I think I kind of know what you're saying. Like that, that does feel like it, it lines up with some of my own experience. So did you take out anything that you thought was good, but you took it out for the sake of the flow of the book? Yeah. Maybe, maybe with a couple things I'm trying to think like, were there things I thought were perfectly good poems that was, that just didn't, there's one I took out that I think is probably a pretty good poem that just it, 
didn't quite make sense in the context of the book. Okay. But for the most part, I don't really believe in unified books. Yeah. So I don't do that much. But yeah, I think there's at least one that I'm trying to, I'm just scrolling through. Yeah, I think there's like probably, most of these I thought they were just like the poems that got left out were just the poems that were not good enough. And then some I thought were like, good or promising but like i couldn't quite finish them or i just felt like I, I wasn't sure there were some others i just got so tired of after a while that i just let them go yeah i think there's probably one that is like pretty as good as as good a poem as any of the as many of the poems that i included but it was in some ways it was like too similar to some stuff that was already in the book oh, okay okay and and I wasn't sure. And I thought like, if it was a matter of that one or a different poem, then I would pick the other one. So how but, did the theme yeah. of the book come together? Because if you're oh. not into books, collected poetry works, like, how did you do that? I don't, I'm not into themes. So I don't really think there is a theme. I mean, I think to the extent to which there's a theme, it's the theme of this is what I was writing about over these nine or 10 years. Yeah. Um, but I don't really think there's properly speaking a, a theme. So the title is just a description of the time in which you wrote this book. Yeah, I just picked it because I thought it would be close enough to sounding like it was kind of a theme. That it was like, it would be like, yeah, all right, that's kind of what's going on here. Like literally the title of my first book was the title of a poem. And I liked the title and I, and I liked the poem okay, but then I, I cut it because it was too long and I kept cutting more and more and more until I cut the entire poem. And the only thing that was left was the title. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I still like the title, Yeah, but I don't have a poem for it anymore. So I'll just make it the title of the book. Yeah. yeah. And this was like, I, I went through a couple possibilities for the title. I actually had a different title and Jonathan hated it so much that I felt like, Oh, well, if he likes the poem it comes from Andy likes the book, but he hates the title that much. It gave me pause. And then, and then do you this feel one comfortable seems... sharing the alternative? Yeah. 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 It was the the title, the original title was the title of the very last poem of the book, which is An Organ of Extreme Perfection, which is a come, it's a line that comes from uh, Darwin. But yeah. uh, he thought that was, that sounded too much like I was boasting about the book itself. I was like, oh, well. I, I thought you were talking it. about your penis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously, exactly. that was like the first thought that came to my mind. <laughs> okay. A member of extreme perfection. Uh, a unit of extreme perfection. Yeah, yeah no, um, no, it's not what I was intending. Uh, but yeah, so for a variety of reasons, that was not the title anymore. But uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, midlife might like it. It could be the title, or something else could be the title. It truly, I don't. I think it truly doesn't matter. Like I tried to make this as good. I wanted this to be like as pleasing an object as pleasing an experience as possible i want like i cared about making the ep epigraph be like enjoyable and gratifying i wanted it to be a fun book to read i wanted it to feel pretty and and like satisfying but like i don't think it, that as a book it matters i think like if any of these poems matter they will survive outside the context of the book like they will get anthologized somewhere they'll get somebody will like share one with a friend they'll get circulated one way or another like so this is not a if someone idea. if someone says i like this book better than your last book are you like well that's fucking that doesn't matter no i think that seems like what i what that means to me is your poems have gotten better like that's what that means be to because me. your collections are just time periods yeah okay and, and in this case they're pretty distinct i'm a slow writer like i really don't plan to put out another book for a number like it's going to be roughly it probably won't be 10 years after this one came out. Mm -hmm. It will be like, it'll probably come out around the time this one was finished. Yeah. Uh, Cause this one ended up taking even, even longer. Okay. Um, yeah. Like my guess is it'll be it, for the period of my life that I was publishing by the time I'm dead, my goal, my goal and my expectation is I will probably average about a book every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. Like that's a lot of the poets I admire did about that. Yeah, and that seems and to if, me. If you like yeah. that, then yeah, kill it. Because I also like the collected. You know, I don't want a collected that's a fucking doorstop. Like, I don't want a collected where you're going through and thinking like, yeah, I mean, he's like, it was what I felt reading through. I just read all of Berryman's poetry recently, and uh -huh. he's great. Like, I love Berryman, but mm -hmm. 
but so much of it, like for hundreds of pages, I would think like, boy, he's so talented, but like, why this? Like, why is this in here? It's okay, just, he's so just dicking around. So would you lose your shit if after you're dead and your kids are grown, your kids are like, oh, let's take all of dad's poems and put them out in one big book. Like, would that just which, like... Which which poems? When you say all his poems, what do you mean? All of your poems. Oh, like the unpublished stuff? Yeah. Oh, that's t- that'd be terrible. Be like, terrible. are you going to put that in your will? Like, make sure like you never publish shit that never got published during my lifetime. I mean, the... I think you the, know this think, is going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen because I think like in order for that to happen, there actually has to be a demand. And I don't think there's going to be a demand. But... Um, well, not with that attitude. <laughs> oh, no, man. but I, I think you know i mean the, the the thing i plan to do is is you know name an executor yeah and then basically like the thought is you by the time you have an executor you shouldn't have to be giving instructions explicitly like you should have enough of an understanding with each other of what you actually want Oh, that's a lot of assumptions you need to write this down dude. yeah i mean i'll yeah like i'll i'll make some things explicit but like but but you what you also want honestly is not for is not to say you don't want to do you know you know the Kafka thing right with um uh, Max Brot was that his name I can't remember I know, I know what you're Max. talking about yeah yeah where like he he Kafka gave half his work to this guy Max Brot and he gave half his work to his girlfriend and he told both of them to burn everything and she was like okay I'm burning it. <laughs> Max Brot was like, no, 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 don't actually burn it. So half of it got burned. <laughs> and and Max, you know, let's say like Virgil left instructions to have the Aeneid burned. Um, and and Nabokov was in the process of burning Lolita when his wife intervened. Um, so I think like don't trust your own shitty judgment. You say to your your friend and smart, loyal executor who also has good taste, you say, right. let's be real sparing about this. But like, if you go through some of the unpublished stuff and you find a gem here or there, like that's yeah. great. Like because okay. they're also like their poems in the, you know, that there there are uncollected poems. Like two of my favorite poems by Larkin are uncollected. They're not yeah. in any of his books. Um, and so like you want somebody to, and in fact, actually three because there's another one that Alice uh, showed me recently that I thought was like, oh, that's great. Um, have you heard her most recent episode? No. It, he has a poem about jerking off. It's really good. It's like a really good jerking off poem. Okay. Um, uh, she reads it on the episode. It's very good. Uh, but like, yeah, so like they're, you know, they're, they're, that's a wonderful thing is when you find like, oh, that's kind of like a lovely little, you know, like little, little kind of funny, quirky thing that would have gotten lost. And like, you're glad oh. to have that be safe, but like, God, <laughs> no, you would never want to just like publish all of it. That's terrible. But there's tons of people who've had all of their stuff published after they're dead. Yeah, they, sure there are. And it's and almost think- always a terrible <laughs> idea. It's almost always a terrible <laughs> idea. It is, I mean, when, like, so seldom is that actually a good idea. Can you think of any time when it was a good idea? I mean, the only reason it would be a good idea is that the person who was doing the editing of all of the works didn't have good enough taste to pull the good ones, right? Like you pull the good, the poems you're like, oh, this one never got published. Like this is actually quite good. Or like, maybe it's not a perfect poem or maybe it's not a fit, but like it has enough of like a nice thing in it that like people would want to read this. This is like, let's save this. But so you be choosy, you be choosy about that shit. <laughs> so you don't think there is something inherently good about showing everyone that even the greats fumbled. I mean, but isn't that obvious? Like, don't we all already know that? No, I don't think people do. That's I think fucking stupid. Because like, I think a lot of people idolize people and think that they're perfect. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, so, like so few people are even choosy. Even the choosy people are so seldom choosy enough. Mm-hmm. Like, out of Larkin's whole, Larkin only published four books. Out of his whole first book, I would say there's one poem worth saving. Like his whole first book was basically a wash. It was basically like he was figuring his shit out. And then by his oh, second no. book, he like, oh, actually now I know how to write a poem. Oh. Um, so no, like so seldom or even like Elizabeth Bishop, incredibly choosy, like very spare. She, her collected works is like, 
Right. I have it over there. Her collected works is like that. It's it's very slender. Tons of boring shit in there. Like tons of shit she could have cut. Yeah. So I just think like even if you only read the collected works of the choosy poets, it, there's still plenty of evidence that like even great poets write a lot of bad stuff. Like even if you just read Shakespeare's sonnets, there's like there's some terrible sonnets in there. Um, so yeah, like I don't think that's hidden knowledge. I think that's pretty obvious for anybody who's looking. I, I don't, yeah, like no, there's no, I don't think there's really any value in just like pouring out the slush you know the internal slush pile of some dead poet like that's well not, don't like, ever uh, make me your executor because yeah, i know yeah, that everything I know. you ever written oh out God. and then i'll even just go through your computer and just start like sending emails and like putting those out you know oh god yeah uh <laughs> yeah that's definitely a like i i have you know I've had some health problems. I've never, I haven't yet gotten to the point where I've had to like think about actually getting my, getting my shit in order. But I definitely have had thoughts about like what kind of self destruction, self destruct like, like instructions do I need to send to like Gmail? <laughs> like what? Like I want to make sure like my wife can get all my passwords, but like, uh -huh. like let's get, make sure that some of this stuff is just destroyed. <laughs> Like definitely my correspondence. Like nobody needs to read my correspondence. <laughs> so there's not going to be like a big book of letters. Good God. What a nightmare. What is that? Yeah. Nobody needs any of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the worst poem in your book, what is yeah. your oh, yeah, favorite yeah, yeah. poem? Let me see if I can, let me see if I can. Yeah. Like there, I'll say like all of these are poems. I have enough reason to like to include in a book that does not have very many poems in it. <laughs> I have three candidates for probably the worst poem in the book. So one is called Voyeurs, one is called Ars Poetica, and one is called Drunk Lullaby. I, I, I can suspect I know which one you, you'll want to hear. Okay. Which is, which is the, the, the third of the ones I just read. Okay. And this is definitely one nobody ever wanted to publish. So one of the, it actually published most of the poems in this book, but this one nobody published. Uh, Drunk Lullaby. Quiet now, let's have a drink. Night withdraws beyond the door. No one needs another rhyme. Cups and dishes brim the sink. Nothing matters anymore. When the coin is cast again, all the past will roll away, humming on its reeded rim. We will say of beauty, then, everything there is to say. Lift a parting glass and go, where good drinkers come to rest. Dream of whiskey, dream of rum. We know all we need to know. Silence now is for the best. Why do you think that no one wanted to publish that? I think it's mostly it's a in some ways it's a very old fashioned kind of poem. Like it's a it's a short, pretty, very metrical, very rhymy poem with what's the uh it has the funny um metrical pattern of uh the lullaby the um the auden poem uh lay your sleeping head my love human on my sleepless arm uh which lends itself especially with such a an overwhelming rhyme scheme to uh like can lend itself to kind of a sense of chiminess um or like a sing-songy chiminess mm -hmm. but there's some other poem i read the, that just the other day that had the same metrical scheme but i can't remember what it was and it's also a totally nihilistic poem and it's a poem about drinking too much and i think like 78 percent of publishing poets are alcoholics and they don't want to think about it <laughs> so i think like i think like that's probably part of it is it's like Okay. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't get in. Like it doesn't do any of the things people say they want poems to do. I just tr wanted it to be pretty, and I wanted it to like accurately convey a feeling that I had. Often, yeah. So that's all it really is. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably why people don't like it. Um, I've always been kind of fond of it. But... Yeah. And so you finished writing this in like what 2019 this uh book yeah yeah 2019 20 
2019, 2020, maybe mm -hmm. sent it out, did a little more work on it, did some revision, got it accepted for publication in 2021. And then it just now came out. Yeah. Uh, cause it had some, hit some bumps in the road along the way. Yep. Um, and but yeah, my, my brother designed the, the jacket. I was very happy with that. And um, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Th thank you. He's, he's a, he's a really good artist. Uh, Rob and Paul at measure were great with like letting us have a lot of freedom with the design and, and, you know, he, they even let me, I, I, I found a different font I wanted them to use. Cause I, I like a slightly different font than the one that you normally have. And they were very good sports about For the that. interior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the font they used it's a it's actually a very respectable good font. I didn't I didn't love it for this text, but I found a free one. <laughs> well, yeah. It was for free. Uh, it was actually it's actually a um it's a good resource for you since you're also a publisher at the um fuck, what is it called? It's a it's like a goof on the old comic book, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, League of Movable Type. So I would look oh. this up because it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, the original, the first, the open source font foundry. So they just designed a bunch of fonts. They were like, the internet is ugly. We want it to be less ugly. So we they just like, they got these like professional designers. They divide, designed a bunch of fonts and they just gave them all, all away for free. Oh, that's amazing. So you can just go to the League of Movable type and they just have free fonts to use. And they're, they're like some really nice ones. Cool. So yeah, I, I found one there I liked. And then I was really particular. Like, I don't mind being like a bridezilla about getting the text in my book correct. Yeah. Like, I was very, I was very particular about that. And Rob was really sweet and worked with me on it. Um, Alex too, like for my first book, he also, I like made him reset the entire text a couple of times. I wanted some, uh, but like, yeah, he was like very, very good sport. And like, my thought is, um, I will go ahead and be an asshole about getting the text right in my book. Yeah. You know, like that's how are thing, you, how yeah. are you about like margins and placement and formatting? Um, I'm pretty particular, but I also am fairly conventional. Like I don't do a lot of like crazy text all over the page floating around stuff. Yeah. So I do have some lines that break off and get continued midline. And those I was very particular about like, no, no, no they need to continue in a way that actually makes sense visually. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I will, I will be, I feel like that's an area where like, you know, like basically like pick your areas in life where you're going to be excessively demanding. Yeah. And then just go easy on all the other ones. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I'm very easy going about most things. This is something I'm very not easy going. About. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they did, I mean, they did a lovely job with it. I'm very, um, very pleased with that. And uh, yeah, like, I think it's a good book. As I said on my podcast, I mm -hmm. think I did a, this, I made a good book for me. Like by the time I published a book of poems, I'm pretty sick of all of them. I'm pretty yeah. much like ready to be, you know. So have you already started putting together the next book? No. I mean, I'm writing, I have lots of poems since this book. I mean, lots for me, which is. Well, like, and like, are any of them use, like though. ones that where you're like, oh, this is going to go in my next book whenever I do that? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I definitely think I have some that will go in the next book. I Good. think uh, you have published at least one or two of them, I think. Sweet. But it's like, it'll, you know, like I'm not in a rush. Nobody's in a rush. Like, nobody's in a rush. Yeah. Like, this was, this was, it was a very rare experience that, like, I actually did start to get emails from people saying, like, so when's your book coming out? Because I feel like that is a question people almost never ask about books of, books of poetry. Very seldom are people, like, champing at the bit to get a new book of poetry. Mostly it's like they come out and you're like, oh, right, there's another 10 more of those I got to buy. There'll be another one still eventually. And probably, I feel soon. like soon. Soon and <laughs> soon comparatively. Yeah. Let's see. Like, I would expect the next one to come out in maybe 20. 2030 that's not that's pretty oh. soon yeah, yeah that's, that's not so bad. far away yeah, yeah. like 20 my, my guess is i'll probably start sending it i'll probably start putting it together in 2018 19 add and subtract for a while maybe try to get it signed on somewhere by 30 31 and put out you know we'll see we'll see how yeah. it goes but yeah i'm not i'm in no rush that's yeah that's and mm. and i just don't think books matter really like books now, to, yeah. I don't think books of poetry matter. That's all. Okay, so are you still actively submitting new work to places? I am. I don't do it a ton. I do. I tend to do it kind of in cycles, and I just did a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, I just submitted a 
bunch, including. <laughs> I had some people solicit poems and then just go totally silent on me, which is never a great, never a great sign. Because you know when somebody solicits poems and then you send them and then like they want to accept them, right? Like you you solicit wanting to accept. And so then if you, if it's like silence for a good while after that, that's like they're trying to come up with either something they can stomach accepting yeah. or like they're trying to figure out, they're trying to put off sending, like composing a note to say like, ah. Uh, Maybe, maybe not these. I did yeah. get, um, I also got, I had somebody solicit work for me and then form reject. <laughs> Whoa. Which feels like, don't, I mean, <sighs> rejections, everybody gets rejections. I get rejections mm. all the time. Like rejections are rejections. It's cool, man. And like, it's, it's totally fair to reject something you've solicited because like, you got to believe in it. You got to believe in it if you're going to publish it. But yeah. like, don't form reject it. If you like, just, if you solicit it, you at least, you at least owe a personal rejection. <laughs> So that sucked. He form rejected me and then he just solicited something else. And I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> so do you like it better when they don't send a form, but just say like, yeah, this isn't what we're looking for right now. Or do you like it when they actually tell you why they don't like it? No, no, no. I don't believe in, I don't believe in plus in reasons. Cause I think usually that's actually bad. I think we know better what we like and don't like than we do why. Okay. And so I think, if, like if you don't like it that's cool just say no but yeah. like do like if if you know me personally this is the thing is like it's a guy i know personally and he personally solicited it and he then formed <laughs> fuck dude that's like a little you know it's like come on just like bro i know like okay you're like shane come on like why are you doing <laughs> yeah, this to me like come on brian <laughs> like, yeah so so like that's yeah like that's a little funny but no I, I don't think like I, I think it's generally worse when you try to give give reasons or explanations I like the worst was like I, su I submitted to this I submitted a piece of fiction to a magazine where I know the guy who does poetry for them uh -huh. and I, I deliberately sent them fiction because I was like well I know the guy who does poetry in a way that like it feels a little awkward and so I I don't want I, I want to avoid sending to him so yeah, I'll just send them fiction so somebody else reads it no of course he read it and then he felt obliged to send me a page long explanation, both of why he was not going to publish it and why he thought it was so good. Such a wonderful story. It was like, fuck, don't damn it. That is don't a lot of that. work to put in. Right. And it's also like, what are you talking about? Like it was, if it was this good, you would publish it. <laughs> like, even if you had to make some changes, like don't tell me it's really, really good. And you can't wait to see it in best American fiction, but not your, not from your magazine like don't tell me that that's ugh. so no i don't believe in reasons i just i yeah i don't believe in reasons or poetry books apparently um but yeah don't don't do a form rejection if you know somebody I, mean, I i send stuff out but i don't i mean i you know i i get i go years without publishing things yeah like so is it is it more of a cycle for you or is it more of like um a schedule when you oh. decide it's ready to start sending like you're ready to start sending stuff out oh it's mostly just because it's such a pain in the ass and i'm so bad at it i'm so bad at any kind of any of the things that are you're supposed to do to have a life that functions and so yeah. i yeah. i just put it off for a while and then i just try to do it a bunch at once but that's really all it is i'm generally right slowly and steadily there's a book buy the book yeah good life and I'll, i'm telling you right now the the cover of the book is beautiful Thank you. Thank you. Whether I, did, no, yeah. I was I was talking I was talking to the listeners. Hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Let me let me explain something to the listeners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even though you can't see the cover of the book, it's gorgeous. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, and I I feel like I can confidently agree with that that because yeah. I I am I'm very I have a it's a it's a series my brother did and I have another version of the same image on my uh, uh wall here that oh shit but, nice yeah that was what i originally was thinking of that and then this i think works better on the cover but um that's the oh, oh cool yeah those are actually most of those are his yeah there's the the other version yeah it's uh it's his wife the woman who's the model for it um, but it doesn't look like a you know it looks pretty abstracted yeah for real uh yeah i think it's a All i think right. it is a good book of poems and it is short and there are no prose poems. So, you know, there you go. Well, shit, you're knocking it out of the park. 
Right. Yeah. Because yeah. when I when I open a book of poems and I see a bunch of prose poems, I just started reading a new book of poems today. It makes you want to not open the book. Like, oh man, all this block of text mm -hmm. stuff. I just I thought I was going to breeze right through this thing, and here I am hitting a wall. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it is not very many words. It is a short book with a pretty cover and not so many words that you're, you know. you're paying for the white space. You are. You're paying not to yeah. read words. That's really what you're doing when you buy a book of poems. That's amazing. Okay, everybody, that was the first installment of my talk with Matthew Buckley Smith and his book Midlife that you can get at the link below. That that one clip right there was um, an hour and two minutes and I edited it down almost to nothing. I'm shocked. So this episode is a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. But that probably means that the next episode is going to be way longer than I could have expected. So, whatever. Like, it, it's some good shit. It's some good shit. Do not forget, March 23rd, I'm going to be at the Bombay Beach Lit Festival doing the zine panel. And uh, I'm going to talk some chapbook stuff in there, too. Read some shit. Sell some shit. Come on out and see me. But... What we're going to do right now is get over to those motherfucking shanners. Okay? So, all right. I, I want to give a big thank you to those motherfuckers over there on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to you, Michael M., Cedar, Harry, and Michael S. And then let me open up this because this has completely changed in the last week. So let's get into that. So um, I want to give a thank you to everyone in the thank you crew. Patrick, Britt, Jan, Ethan, Cedar, Joseph, Nathan, Deborah, and Lauren. Thank you guys so much. And then for the big swinging dicks over there in the fucking anarchy crew. I want to give a big thank you to him. And welcome back, Chasey. And then we got Michael, J.H., Adam, Tamra, Shaylin, Mindy, and Nate. And then for the burgers of the big swinging cockalockles, I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin, the number one chappy over there in the chap book of the month club. Then I also want to let you know that there are also two new tiers in um, the memberships over here. So once you get past Chapbook of the Month Club, there's also the mentorship tier. So a lot of you know, I have been doing um, mentorship, mentorship sessions with a lot of you, okay? And normally how we would book those is you would... Just send me an email. We'd schedule a time and um, I send you an invoice. Now you're going to do it through YouTube. And since a lot of you who were doing the mentorship with me were doing it on a monthly basis anyway, now it's just going to be a monthly thing. And not only do you get to have those sessions with me every month, you also get access to all the other shit. So you're going to get one of my chat books every month. You're going to get um, access to the Poetic Anarchy course. You're going to get the members only live streams, um, including this Friday. We're doing the Anarchy Crew um, writing Zoom workshop. So um, that's going to be fucking awesome. Plus you get the loyalty badges and emojis and... Um, extra videos like the one with me and bucks here where he's going to tell me how to go to fucking therapy so that's the mentorship tier and then the i don't know what i'm going to fucking call this i guess i can't really change it now that i already made it but the um writing business builder it's a horrible fucking name so maybe i'll just call it the the biz builder that's even stupider Whatever it is, it's a weekly fucking thing. So it's just like the mentorship, but it's like super fucking hands-on, um, full of 
like hardcore critiques on not only your work but your work ethic and also your marketing business and all that shit and so that all that shit again you get everything that all the other tiers get but this is like weekly shit now a lot of you aren't going to need weekly shit but if you have like a book launch coming up or if you have um, some big event that's a few months away or something like that and you really want to fucking nail that shit that's when you would come into this and then at any time if you want to drop back down to mentorship you can or if you're just somebody who needs the fucking weekly kick in the ass then go ahead and fucking join that so again all of these tiers you can see and are available if you click the join button under my youtube page under the videos or when you go to my youtube page at matt wall um there'll be the little join button so that is probably the biggest um, update. And as far as other videos that I've been doing, I just wanted to kind of catch you up on this shit because um, I'm back to pretty much daily uploads over on my YouTube channel. And one of the things that I've been doing lately that seems to be going really, really well is the instead of responding to comments here on the podcast i'm responding to comments just in their own videos and um i've done two of those in the last couple weeks and they're pretty cool although i think people got a little frisky because they knew i was going to be reading the comments and stuff so i got some people talking shit and so i had to talk shit back so um, if you're into that, definitely check those out. But other um, videos that I have done lately, um, are you too old to become a writer? Um, when your writing scares you, um, and that's a video about why I never finished my horror trilogy, uh, Bloodlust Romance. Um, let me see, how to know if you're good enough to be a writer. Um, and then I even did a video reviewing Virginia Woolf's Orlando because a beautiful fucking woman told me to read it. Uh, and then I even talked about um, my 30 years with the muse. Um, that's like kind of a whole fucking deal. Um, and then that was that. And then um, I've also been doing this series called Fix Writer Self-Sabotage. And there's five or six videos of that up now and I'm going to be doing another one of those probably today and that'll go up sometime this week probably Thursday um and I think what I'm going to do is once all those are done and out I'm going to take all those videos and cut out the good parts like just like little snippets and make a podcast episode since I know a lot of you who are listening to this podcast listen to it on like itunes and um spotify and other things like that so um i'll give you a little taste of what's going on on the youtube channel with that and then as far as um oh yeah and then i got into some shit and i did a video called things i hate about the online book community um that c caused a couple ruffles and some feathers um, but I'm also still doing the Bukowski Book Club, and I'm going to put up the last part of War All the Time here this week as well before we move into uh, You Get So Alone at Times, It Just Makes Sense. Those are on the table there, but I also do vlogs. Um, so I have a vlog up here, like some of the last couple vlogs I've done is um, Rain in L.A., the downtown L.A. skyline, Tent City, Bacon Bloody Marys, taco trucks, interviewing Uber drivers, um, being hit up for cash by homeless people. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, 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 um. Oh, um, a, a sunny day in L.A. Finally, I went up on the roof and... Um, gave you a tour of like what all the different parts of LA are. Um, I did a 
couple unboxings and mail haul kind of things with some chat books and with some gifts. And um, then I did some food shit. I ate Dave's hot chicken. Um, I I showed you my favorite. Um, <laughs> I'll just show you again. My favorite um, dried mangoes from Southern Grove that you can only get at Aldi's. Um, super fucking delicious. And um, did some spicy pork jerky. So these are all of the ridiculous things that you can see um, when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, all that other shit. In case you are just a listener on the things that make noises. It's actually kind of exhausting uh, reading all that shit that I've done in the last couple weeks up on YouTube right now. Kind of, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. So anyway. Um, yeah, and I think... Uh, oh, I'll, I'll talk about that in the next one. No need to fucking screw that pooch right now. So anyway, go over to YouTube if you haven't already subscribed to at Matt Wall. Um, click the join button, join the Anarchy Crew, join the Chapbook of the Month Club, join the mentorship thing, join the awful titled writer business builders. Okay? They're all fucking good shit. And again, the thank you crew is also greatly appreciated. Okay? So there's all that. Um, keep buying my books. Go over to Amazon and start picking up my shit up on there. Um, and hopefully by this time next week, my fucking online store, my new shop, my beautiful, beautiful store will finally be up. And um, you got to start acting quick on these chat books because I have a feeling I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of these very soon with all of my um, appearances I'm going to be doing. Okay. They always go faster when I could shove them in people's hands. Okay. Uh, that's what she said. Mm, no. Okay, guys. So do all those things that I just said to do because it's the right thing to do and you're awesome. And tell someone that you kind of like a little bit about this podcast because they will love it. They will. Okay? Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.